Last time we talked about bullying and racism in England and Australia. And having filmed that, uh, I sat home thinking, that's probably not the most troubling thing that I encountered as a kid. I remember when I was really little, uh, there was a stage when my English was really poor. My mother tongue should be Cantonese because that's the language I learned first, my first language. After I started speaking English at school with my siblings, that outstripped my Chinese. So my Chinese gradually went down the drain and my English got better. But there was a time when, you know, neither my English nor my Chinese was any good at all. So I was constantly confused, not knowing what to say, having a hard time thinking of the word to describe what I wanted to tell the teacher. There was this one time I went to school with a piece of paper that was torn. I didn't know how to say torn. I couldn't think of the word. Uh, I think I was four or five. And I looked at the teacher vaguely. My paper, my sheet of paper is broken. And it really bugged me because I couldn't Did you have a word. British accent then? Or do you yes, it was a, uh, well, okay. Miss, uh, my piece of paper is broken. That's how I spoke. So proper accent <laughs> with the wrong word. Yeah, I don't think the accent bothered me too much, but there were times when I couldn't think of the word, I was just staring at the teacher, like, someone help me please. My sheet of paper, it's, 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 that bugged me. Yeah, English was also my second language. I basically had zero understanding of English. So you went to Australia when you were five. five? Yeah, I started kindergarten and I remember very vaguely that the first year was a complete blur language-wise. All my classmates would talk to me and to me it kind of seemed like they were talking gibberish at me because I didn't know the language, right? So they'd be talking at me and I'd be reading them like their body language. Yeah. So I felt they were friendly. So I would just smile but then they'll be like like literally to me that was what it was like when they were talking to me and I only knew McDonald's and I because <laughs> I like McDonald's <laughs> so and yes and no I knew three words and maybe like water and hamburger and, and cheeseburger no 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 hamburger and cheeseburger just McDonald's why? I don't know I really liked McDonald's when I was a kid and you went all the time? Uh, no I didn't get to go much what? when I was in Australia I got to go more often. Okay, okay. Yeah. Did it bother you? It was a bit scary because you didn't know what they were saying, but it was also good because like, you can learn to read people's body language yeah, yeah. a bit more. As a young, like I was like five, kid. as a kid, um, it was nerve wracking and I also felt like I was an outcast because every week there were like two days where they had to kind of fish me out of class and take me to ESL, which is English as a second language okay. class. And I didn't know what that was for. I just felt like, oh, there's something wrong with me and I had to go to this class. Until I learnt what ESL stood for. <laughs> <laughs> but very, very soon, like by grade one, I could communicate properly with... A grade one is a year after you. Yeah, one year. So kindergarten and then year one, yeah. I remembered that I think I went into the boys' toilet. What? That's not language this. <laughs> Three months because I couldn't really tell whether boy or girl, like I couldn't read the words. But there's a picture of a boy and a picture of a girl wearing a skirt. I don't think there was a picture at what? my school until someone told me there was a boy's toilet. Or maybe there was a picture and I couldn't see it. I honestly I went to the boy's toilet when I was five at school for literally like three months and then someone told me. No, 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 boys, girls, and then I was like, oh. That's weird. <laughs> it's not. A, it's no longer a question of language, then. Maybe, just... maybe everything just made everything really. No, no, I suppose yeah. Being yeah. a new place at, at that young an age. Yeah. It was just your being overwhelmed by everything. Maybe, yeah. When I reached secondary school, like 12, 13 years old, I started figuring out my level of proficiency in English and Chinese. So there were fewer awkward situations. There was this one time, I'm not sure, probably not the awkwardness from the language as opposed to falling asleep in geography. So I fell asleep, as you would, and then uh, the teacher called out my name and asked me if I was sitting on the fence because I said nothing. I didn't raise my hand. And I looked at him and thought, sitting on the fence. So I said, oh, yes. That was strange, a little awkward. 
but probably more so because of my falling asleep and being woken up. It's like, uh, it's like you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. I, I, have, I have no recollection of the question. So I'm sure everyone raised their hand, you know, do you agree or not? Yes, I agree. And then Jason was just sat there, uh, like just asleep like this. And he's like, yeah, yes, like this. It'd be funny if you answered him, no, 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 I was sleeping. I wasn't sitting on the fence. <laughs> Uh, I had a kind of not an embarrassing situation, but around the age of eight ish, nine, um, I went out with my parents to a nice dinner. So, my parents are quite traditional. We don't really go out for like Western food much. Yeah. We cook at home, tr traditional Chinese food or Chinese restaurants. And so, we went for a steak that night, and it was a nice place. And the waiter kind of introduced the menu to us. You know, this is a steak, you can have it like rare, medium well done etc 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 and then he came back like 10 minutes later to take our order and mm. asked us how would you like your steak i kind of remember what he said but very vaguely and so i said to him i'd like my steak wonderful <laughs> i kind of meant well done like well wonderful it's like positive w yeah w associated wonderful. words so he was really nice about it so he said, okay, our steaks will always be wonderful. I said, I think he said something along those lines. And it was slightly embarrassing. But I guess my parents wouldn't know any better anyways. Yeah. But I felt like I should have known. Even at the age of eight, I yeah. thought that was an embarrassing situation, not knowing how to order steak. I don't think we order steak until I was 20-something. Oh, really? For real, because we never went out to any Western... Uh, steak restaurants or... Right? It's no. not an unusual thing. You think you grew up in Australia and England, you have Western food all the time, go to Western restaurants? No. I did not know how to properly order stuff from menus until I was nearly like high school graduate. I don't think I figured that out until I was 20 something, almost 30. Really? Basically you have a menu and you can order a la carte, you know, as you like, or you can follow their set menu. So I reckon up to after I started working, saving some money, going out with my girlfriend, uh, now my wife, and then you know you kind of learn and figure out what you're doing. But when you're like 20, you've never been to a restaurant. Yeah. You, know, you see all that stuff and think. Uh, and yeah, it is hard to order. You try to remember the steak being well done. I'm not even sure I knew the difference between well done, medium, or if there was any other alternative. Okay, so, yeah, I'm uh, pretty advanced then. Menus and ordering at restaurants, I think, are awkward even for adults. Yes. So, you go to a fancy restaurant, uh, first of all, there's a dress code, so I can't wear jeans. And then there's also, you know, there's an etiquette. Uh, yes. What you do, and how you order, how you taste the wine. I think it's quite daunting for most people. Oh, there have been like things that I would kind of like say, because my parents would say it that way, and I thought it was right. Like, <laughs> I remembered some restaurant called Sizzla or something. It's pronounced Sizzla, yeah. right? But obviously my parents had a Chiglish accent. They say something like Sisa or something like that. <laughs> like, I, I called that <laughs> restaurant Sisa. Like, I, I think it was the right word. <laughs> that happened quite a lot. Like, I can't pinpoint exactly what others, but like there's a place called Flemington, right? <laughs> And obviously it's got Flemington after learning English, you know, for a good couple of years, I realized F-L-E and uh, you know, being able to yeah. pronounce it Flemington. But before that, my parents would say, Flemington. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say that to everyone because I would think that's the right word. But you'd pronounce Femington. it Flemington. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know any better. So it's a good thing my parents didn't teach me anything. Yeah, and I'll be, I would say, yeah, I want to go to the Central Point Tower. And I'd be, I'd be saying it, and then I realise it's Centre Point Tower. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of situations like that, now that you talk about it. But obviously, it, it doesn't really, I don't think it's affected you much at all, because having made mistakes from mum and dad's guessing or her, their mistakes, you still choose to just say what you want without thinking about it. How you, you are. like trying to put me yeah. down? No, 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 I'm, I'm thinking, uh, you've gone through a few years of just guessing and saying the wrong thing, but at the same time, it doesn't bother you and you don't really care, which is good. Yeah, it doesn't really bother me. I mean, having Asian parents that have mediocre English, that's what happens, right? Yeah.
you kind of know that's your weakness, so you kind of put more effort into it. Yeah. When I got to high school, I actually got really high marks for my oral presentations because I felt the need to be able to present myself correctly, correctly, <laughs> and speak with like the correct enunciation and tone. And Grammatically, yeah. everything. So we're always talking about interpersonal skills, and I guess without language, without proficiency in English or Chinese, it's hard to establish any kind of connection. So I think it's a huge responsibility for parents to, at a very young age, correct if, what if their you can. kids are saying if you can. Because when they're confident with their language, it yeah. will help them a lot initially in the first few years of their schooling, of uh, their interpersonal skills. I was speaking to a friend and they're asking how they can uh, do story time better with their kids because their English isn't fluent. And I guess, uh, it's no different for a kid. Speak more, read more. Uh, I don't suppose a kid's storybook is going to be particularly challenging. So, if you pick up a uh, any kind of kid's book and just read it, read it with them. Uh, pronunciation might not be spot on, but at least there's some kind of connection when you're reading the story together. Mm. I've been reading uh, a book called Monsters and Magical Beings, and we read it every night. We've read it so much that he knows which character, which monster does what and their characteristics. So he knows that the troll is dumb and slow-witted. He knows that someone has bad breath and he knows that uh, one of them gets shot by an arrow. So, you know, there's a lot of learning together with a kid. Maybe because we didn't have that when we were younger, like my, our parents were like so busy with work and stuff. And yeah. It wasn't like they didn't want to correct us, but their English wasn't strong, so they couldn't really correct us mm. anyways. So we do make an extra effort to yeah. correct Damon's English. I guess it's learning together. Uh, even if my parents, if they weren't fluent in English, but to read together, it's fun. So that's a great way for you to bond and at the same time learn the language. Like these monsters and magical beings, it's not taxing, it's not hard to read. So when you read it 10 times over the course of a month, then it's fun and you learn together. You learn about monsters. Well, it's definitely better than my paper being broken. <laughs> that's true.